there is a way to understand how you prioritize or process noise when you need to focus and concentrate on something. This is not about yelling at guys, you gotta focus. You teach them how to do that when you have a tremendous amount of noise. This happens in the military. This happens in other areas. We try to teach our guys as best we can how to be able to handle that. The fact that we've done that in the past, I think that will help us, number one. Number two, I might be, you guys would all know the stats better than I, but I think they hold 25, 27,000. So they hold 25, 27,000. Okay, 26, okay, about 25, 26,000. That's bigger than Liberty. They are in the mountains, and somehow the mountains uh, enhances the decibel level. So the decibel level in that stadium is, I think, the greatest of any FCS outdoor program, outdoor stadium in the country. So that's why. But I mean, you know, if it's not that loud, that's fine with us, but we're assuming it's going to be really loud. No, that was for that matchup. You know, we felt, remember last week we said, so you do have some questions about Bethune. Okay, so remember last week we said that, that, that what they do really, really well, they are great at running the inside zone and reading that and handing the ball off on the dive and the quarterback keeping. They had three quarterbacks, the five guys average over five yards a catch. We had to take that away. Now, in taking that away, if they're going to go to a drop back pass, we thought we would be effective bringing more pressure. That was the case. These are two very, very different teams. So we're still in the process. I thought we had a good day of practice yesterday, but we're still in the process of finalizing our game plan. Coach, what's your take on the Big Sky Conference? This is one of the biggest ones out there. I think before the title of summer, you said that it's the SEC of the FCS. Uh, they beat each other up. I think four of their teams are ranked, but this one is in one of the polls. And uh, they didn't beat each other up this week. I mean, I think they're a very good conference, Mike. I mean. You know, I don't study the big sky. I don't think about the big sky until – I'm not thinking about the big sky right now. I'm not even sure who's in the conference. I know what we're doing is we're paying attention to Montana. Montana's good, and Montana's our opponent. I do know the big sky is a very good conference. I know that. But, you know, I haven't paid too much attention to the big sky as a conference. I have had no need to do that. I have no need to do it now, but I'm paying attention to Montana. Two of the losses are big sky fellow conference players. I think Northern Arizona. Yeah, that's right. Well, the answer, yeah, but that's part of your preparation. It's got nothing to do with the fact that they're in that conference. I mean, I'm, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. It doesn't, that doesn't impact our preparation, right? In other words, we don't need to kind of, in other words, the fact that they're in, the fact that somebody's in the SOCON of the Colonial Conference. The, when we play a Big South game, it's a, an important game because it's a conference game. But we don't prepare. We don't say we're preparing for a Big South opponent. We're preparing for a Colonial opponent or a Southern uh, so, so kind of opponent or basically we don't think that way. We just don't think that way. We know the Big South is a good conference. I mean, we're aware of that. That's got nothing to do with us. We got to play Montana. Montana is a good football team. That's that's a real concern. That's 100 percent of our effort. Make sense? <laughs> well, I'm then challenge me. I want you to challenge me because how will it help us by focusing on their conference when we don't play or do anything with a conference other than play Montana. Well, I mean, maybe I'm missing your question. Well, I'm getting at, I mean, obviously, Eastern Washington found something that yeah, worked for them. Yeah, right. And, and, and so if Eastern Washington wasn't in, the, wasn't in their conference, they were in some other conference, but they had the same, they had, we'd be looking at that film the same way. The conference, I'm just saying, has nothing to right. do with yeah, that preparation. Do that you saw that, you know, because Northern Arizona's in their conference, too, and they did fine. You know, they well, we're in the process now. We're in the process your point's well taken. They got a great conference. I acknowledge that. I'm just saying their conference is not impacting how we prepare for them. I'm saying that very, very clearly. I'm saying we are preparing for Montana. We are looking at the bulk of their film. Any idea we can get from other games they've played, we are going to factor into our preparation. There is no part of that factoring in that's got anything to do with the fact that they played or lost to somebody else in their conference. We are looking at the games they won. We're looking at the games they lost. I mean, I try to avoid you. That's why I'm being being a little obstinate about it. I'm not trying to avoid what you're saying. I just, I think you're trying to make a point. I, I understand your point. I said it doesn't affect our preparation. That's all. Right, I understand that. I'm just trying to get at what the preparation is for this game because obviously it's a different style of football out there that you just don't see. The Mon that's Montana. That's Montana. We are focused on Montana. I can't tell you what the style of football is in that conference. I know it's a good conference. I can tell you the style of football Montana has. 
Could you tell me your travel plans and how differently the players will dress for this game than they do out here? Yeah, we're trying to look at, you know, we want to do layered clothing. You know, we're looking at warmers, we're looking at different things like that, skull caps, et cetera. Uh, we want to be able to have, again, it was about insulating body heat. You know, what type of, is there some, some sort of skin cream you could use that kind of helps along those lines? Uh, we're, we're doing all those things. Uh, we're going to have fleece jackets for the guys. We're looking at all those things. We're, we're going to have heaters on the sideline. Um, we would think about, for example, instead of, like, just water and Gatorade, which we'll have, uh, like, we might very well have, like, chicken broth or something like that at halftime for the guys, something along those lines. That's the way we're approaching it. What and one other thing we're doing, we're going out a day earlier than what we normally would. So that gives us a chance to have two days in the cold weather to practice out there. We'll be doing that. So we'll be practicing there Thursday as well as Friday. How long does it take a team to acclimate to something like that? Dep it's nothing to do with being a team. It's got everything to do with just what your body, what your body is used to. This is all science. Not, football is zero here. Science, 100%. Just if you are used to, if your body temperature is used to 40 to 50 degree heat, Okay, or temperature, and now you're going into near zero, my guess that takes six weeks. Uh, science would do it, but it's, it's closer to six weeks than it is two days. So we understand that. We're aware of that. So we're going to do what we can to, as best we can. We're not going to be acclimated, but we're going to be as best we can prepared for it. Just like you can't really replicate the noise, but we're going to be as best we can prepared for it. And that's what we're going to do as far as these guys go. But you can't acclimate – if we were used to playing in 15 degree weather, you'd still have to acclimate to kind of fight, but that would be easier. That'd probably take a day, a couple of days. You're then always, it's, it's you're always honest with me. Yeah. Does this give them a distinct advantage, this cold? I think when you're used to playing in cold weather, I just said if our guys are used to 50 degrees and they're used to 20 degrees, that's an advantage. I think that is an advantage. Um, if but you know what? When you're playing in 20 degrees and it's 7 degrees, you know, that's colder than 20 degrees. No, but there isn't any question. If you have a team, for, look at the NFL stuff. You have Miami, they got to play in New England. That's an advantage for New England. There isn't any question about that. No, that's an advantage for them. But we know that, and we have to, we have to prepare understanding that. Uh, and that's why we're trying to focus on you know, the science behind this. It's, it's about insulation. It's about retaining body heat. We know it's going to be cold. How are we going to handle that? Um, Did you, like, have to make special purchases for yes. this year? Yes. Yeah. Like, a lot of our guys don't have coats. I've got great boots. They're, like, in Omaha someplace. <laughs> I didn't pack them. I didn't bring them to South Carolina. Do you like playing in cold weather? And what is the coldest you've ever had to play in? Um, I don't like playing in cold weather, but it makes me no difference. If we're going to win a football game, I have to do what I have to do. But the coldest I've ever played in was probably Stony Brook of 2011, my freshman year. I would say that. That wasn't a picnic. At all. <laughs> Same question, Thomas. Um, yeah, I would have to say that uh, the coldest I played in was Stony Brook, too. But um, I've played in some pretty cold games. Being from Connecticut, I've probably played in uh, low teens. And I mean, I don't, I don't mind it since I've played in it my whole life, so I'm pretty much used to it, to be honest. Does it make you a different team? All of a sudden, you come out there, there's a stadium full of more people than you've probably played before, except for the Gamecock game. Uh, and, and then it's just colder than you know what. It, does that affect, does that make you any different as far as what you can do and how you can perform, how you can move around? Um, I think, yeah, it's a lot to do with physicality, but it's also a lot mental. Like, if you tell yourself you're going to be all right, even though it's cold out, and you put your mind like you're going to be all right pretty much. And um, yeah, most of our players, being from South Carolina in the South, they're not really used to the cold weather, I would say. But once we get up there and once we get moving around, and like Coach Mowgli has said, the equipment staff is going to get us, get us right. So I think we'll be all right. Are you sharing some of your knowledge being from up north with some of the guys? I know you're going to have your little seminar later, and they're going to teach you how to layer and do all the stuff they're going to teach you. But have you shared some knowledge about how to do, how to play in cold weather with some of your teammates? I mean, there's not really any knowledge to share when it comes to playing in cold weather. It's, um, it's just the game of football. You just got to go out and play. It's no different than playing in 100 degrees. You just got to, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Is it different to catch a cold? <laughs> yes. 
zero degree football rather than a football at room temperature? I don't know. Is it harder to, for Alex to throw the ball if it's cold? Yeah, I would say that's yeah. There's a difference there because your fingers get all cold. You got to do like finger exercises on the sideline to make sure they're good. And um, yeah, I don't know about the quarterback wise. I don't know. It probably might be a little bit more difficult to grip the ball if it's freezing cold, but. I think we'll be all right. I don't think it'll be a problem. What's your confidence level this week? Uh, team seems pretty confident. We're just uh, we're preparing the same we usually do, like we did last week, like we did the week before. And um, we're just trying to go out there and win another football game, move on to the next level, keep this thing riding. Do you draw on any experience from getting this far last year, or as far as getting caught up in a moment or anything? Or do you not even pay attention to what teams are left and just focus on you guys have to play? Um, yeah, I'm sure having the experience from last year helps us out a little bit. But um, last year we lost in this round, so we're just trying to we're just trying to get further than last year. We're trying to keep this thing going. We don't want our season to end yet. Does it feel different this year? Do you guys feel more confident going in the second round than you did last year? Maybe just because that was all new territory at that point. I'll oh, say that one more time, please. Is there a difference this year from this time last year? Do you feel more confident during the second round? I would say, but not really. It's just we just prepare every day. Like I said, we just prepare every day and prepare for the worst. That's that's it. That's pretty much it. I mean, do you guys think about the opportunity to, to take this program to another level and to continue this growth and kind of what opportunity is out there for you this weekend? Oh, yes. Coach mentions it all the time. He mentions how great of an opportunity is for us, and we're just trying to seize the moment. We're just trying to take advantage of what we have. This tournament started off with 16, and of course they've expanded up to 20, 24. To, to build off of Ryan's question, this would be a new watermark for the for the Coastal program. If winning a round of 16 game, do you realize how big a deal that would be? Yeah, it's real major. It's, it's very major. We realize that too. That's why we're preparing so great. Um, what else can you share? Describe for us what it's like playing in this kind of bitter cold. Because I. Connecticut, right, is what I heard. Yep. But obviously when you guys start, it's you know, kind of like here, but then it just gets progressively colder after that. Um, what's it like, I mean, not just in catching balls, but blocking, uh, running, you know, being tackled on the ground and frozen ground, I mean, what's it like? Yeah, it's definitely a difference in playing in that cold of weather and as warm as it gets over here during training camp. Um, it obviously hurts a lot more when you get tackled because your body's all cold, so when you hit the ground, it doesn't feel too good. And then I think another thing is it's just all in your mind, I think. Like, if you go out there and you say you're going to be all right, like, it's all mental. It's not really physical in my mind.